Okay, so for the video today, uh, what we're going to be looking at is uh, a sample web application. It's a bit of a POC. Um, and what we're doing is we're going to install a web application that I made uh, using PHP uh, with a MongoDB backend. This extends a little bit on the uh, previous post that I put, uh, put up uh, about getting started with MongoDB. Uh, and what I did was I adjusted it, I had an idea, uh, and we'll be um, installing uh, and getting started with a web application, which is a little bit like a self-hosted post-it note repository. Um, in some ways, it's kind of similar to Google Keep, uh, but the emphasis of the web app is more on group uh, collaboration or organization. So. Uh, in Google Keep, you can kind of do this uh, from the beginning. Uh, this is going to be more in storing notes, storing um, information, and then being able to share it within a, a team of people or a group of people. Um, or just uh, organizing, say, like a catalog of notifications. So what we're going to do uh, and what we're showing here is we uh, did a Git clone. We copied the files down to the local host. Now we're going to uh, do the install. The recommended install is going to be uh, Docker Compose up. I'm speeding up the video here uh, just to make everything go a little bit faster. Um, but once this gets started, we'll log into the app. Um, the default uh, for anyone first using the app is admin admin. Uh, so username admin, uh, password admin. Uh, you'll be able to log directly in. The really cool thing about MongoDB is it doesn't need to uh, have any like um, pre-provisioning. You don't have to like uh, put in specific tables or something to get it uh, started and working. Uh, it'll just take whatever you feed it uh, and with uh, hopefully a semi-decent amount of programming, uh, you can feed it all the right things to make your application work. Uh, once we get here where we have the colored uh, labels. The web app should be running, so we can just go and log in. So we'll just go to the local host because this is going to be working off the local port. Uh, once here, you can see welcome to our note organizer. That's the current name of the app. Uh, we log in, nothing here, but we can change our password first, always best practice. So we're going to change the password of admin. Uh, once that's changed, we just update. Users are stored in a MongoDB uh, uh, collection, um, and uh, the posts themselves are also stored in a collection. Uh, and what this does in the back end essentially is you can create posts, you can create uh, posts or notes, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can feed it a, uh, a title, you can associate a group. Uh, by default, the group will always be the same name as the username. And then you can even do accent colors. Uh, the accent colors only show on the home screen of all the notes, uh, but are potentially useful like if you needed to uh, organize the things and, and view the notes. Um, the default background color is white, uh, but you can change to pretty much any color you want. Emphasis though, uh, lighter background colors are better. So um, that helps the text uh, show up a little bit more nicely uh, in the uh, overview page or the home page. So uh, this is just creating a quick note. Um, so it's saying the admin is the default administrator. Uh, and then we'll cover users in a moment. So here, once a note's created, it shows up there as a block. Uh, we can create a second post as well. Um, then we're going to import or we're going to add some dummies. Uh, lorem ipsum is a good uh, dummy text or filler text. So we're going to go get some lorem ipsum text, uh, copy that in. So once we uh, get the text from the lorem ipsum generator, just copy in a few paragraphs. Uh, control C and over to control V. Um, the text editor here, uh, what you're seeing, it's a uh, it's something called tiny MCE. Um, 
Now I don't assign an API key with this because it can be domain specific. So uh, any user wishing to use this application can go and create their own API key uh, and put it in. I have instructions on how to do that in the GitHub page. Um, and I'll also try to link in the blog. What we're doing now is creating a new user. So we're just creating a user named George. Uh, we're going to give him a very simple password uh, and then just create, um, say, uh, add user. Now, once we update the user, um, you'll notice that the member groups uh, are auto assigned. So every new user at least gets uh, the group of their own name so they can have their own group. Um, that way, if you need to share any other groups or anything like that, uh, you can add that in. Uh, and then what we can do for George's account is we can make him also a member of the admin group. Making him a member of the admin group uh, would allow George to be able to see posts uh, from admin as well, uh, because those other posts are associated by default with the admin group. Um, when assigning groups uh, under the edit user or under uh, change password, uh, that needs to be done with a comma. A comma. Um, all of the groups are comma delimited. And then uh, essentially using just uh, the backend code, uh, I split out the commas, remove any duplicates, and then uh, that allows us to group the posts together so that we can sort by post. Uh, if I remove that, all the posts are gone. So if George doesn't want to be a member of the admin group, he can change that by clicking change password. Um, and he can start creating his own post. Um, and then once in here, we're going to add uh, more filler text. Once in here, we're going to add more filler text and uh, just sort of show how this works. That pop up that you're seeing there uh, from Tiny, um, if you apply an API key or register the domain um, of your site, uh, that that can disappear. So you have to follow the instructions uh, that are presented in that in that pop up. Um, but there is there are ways to uh, get rid of that pop up if you want to actually uh, use use this site and use Tiny. Now what we're going to show here is actually going to be an error. So if we wait a minute, uh, we'll see that the image fails to upload. So I'm just putting in a picture of people surfing, but there's an error because of the permission. Um, this is something which I haven't figured out a good way around of uh, using GitHub, but essentially it comes down to the folder permissions. So if you run the git clone, the default uh, folder for images, uh, it won't be able to accept the uh, file transfer uh, into the image folder. The way the image folder works uh, in this um, application is you post the image to HTTP, um, PHP grabs it and then tries to move it into the images folder and then uh, assigns the link the image in the MongoDB uh, backend. So that way I know uh, which image is associated with which post. But uh, you need to be able to allow a read, write, and execute. Um, and what we're checking now here is uh, when we do the read, write, and execute, you can run the CMON 777, which I ran uh, a couple minutes ago. Um, and then you'll be able to uh, actually see here. Now, what we're seeing right now is that um, the group of surfing has been assigned uh, to both the admin user and the user George. However, uh, the issue is that the post itself that George first uh, put in uh, didn't assign the correct, correct group. So right now we're doing a second post. Uh, we're assigning the correct group uh, we're uploading a new image. And once this image uh, gets effectively uploaded, then uh, both George and admin would be able to see it because they're both members of the same group. So you can use the groups as ways to like, if you have a project, if you have something which uh, you want a whole bunch of team members all working on, you can just, uh, for every user group, just make sure that that group is assigned uh, in their user profile. Um, or you could just use it as like a way of uh, collages or things to um, group different bits of information around a certain topic. So it could be surfing, it could be birds, it could be whatever. Uh, you can create these groups. Um, now when George logs in, he can see both posts as he's members of both groups. Um, and then he can also 
uh, go through and assign the correct grouping uh, to his original post. So there's assigning George, he assigns it to surfing, submit. Um, and then if uh, admin were to log in, uh, the admin user would also be able to see uh, that additional surfing post because it was assigned to that group. Log in, uh, and indeed you see that group. So quick uh, tutorial. Um, thank you all for watching, uh, and I hope this gives you an idea of kind of what you can do with uh, both PHP and uh, MongoDB. Thank you very much.